And who else? Travis Etienne. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're I mean, yeah, they're unbelievable. I mean, he, he, I can't wait to watch some guys run in the combine whenever that time comes. I mean, those guys are gifted. Uh, Travis is so explosive. You know, he's zero to 60. And, uh, and, then, and then Isaiah is just smooth. And you just, he doesn't look like he's running. And he's smoking uh, just super fast. So uh, all those guys like to compete whenever we do run, especially in the summertime. You know, they'll get out there and, and uh, you know, have some races. But we got a lot of guys that can run. But it is when you see a guy that's 230 plus pounds that can run like Isaiah, he's, 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 he's unique. There's not, I haven't been around many guys uh, like him. I, I tell everybody, I played with a guy at Alabama uh, one year that, that he's the only guy that, that you know, was kind of freaky uh, like, like Isaiah. You know I mean, just as far as just a jumbo guy that could run. And, and uh, uh, so the, name, the guy, named, his name was Keith McCants. And, uh, you know, he was, he was, and he can run the wideouts. He can run with DBs. I mean, he was amazing. And, you know, he was so big. And, um, you know, Isaiah's, Isaiah's uh, uh, kind of unique because uh, he can play so many different positions. Um, he can cover, he can rush, he can, he can play in the box, uh, he can play outside, he can do a lot of things. But uh, his speed and size and length and athleticism and his knowledge, he's such a smart uh, young man now and such high character. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's become a great uh, preparer and uh, it shows week in and week out, and unbelievably consistent. And uh, the interception day where he was supposed to be and, and uh, big play for him. Coach, special day at Death Valley with all the tributes to the military. You had the general speak to the team on Thursday. What, how did the players react to, to the general? Yeah, it was great. Uh, General Brady, uh, Major General Brady, uh, he is the most decorated uh, person alive uh, from Vietnam War. Uh, and, you know, he, he flew over 2,000 helicopter missions and, uh, you know, received the Medal of Honor, Honor one time. They had like 400 bullet holes in the, in the helicopter and uh, rescued over 5,000 soldiers throughout his, his missions there. I mean, just pretty amazing, you know. Uh, and just just heroic so really super cool to meet a real hero like that and, and uh, him speak to the team and have a chance to meet some other folks today uh, I don't I just don't know I mean I'm sure other people do a great job but uh, I mean the, the military appreciation here at Clemson is is one of my favorite days and it's just unbelievable uh, it is just so amazing every single year um, what a great job all the people involved that, that organize it and put it on and the, the lot of work that goes into it and the people who come, uh, it's special. And uh, the purple's kind of become a cool thing uh, as well on, on this day. And I, I, one of these days I'd love to be able to see the flyover. Uh, you always hear it, uh, but I heard that was pretty cool. Uh, but it was just awesome. It was a great day and our fans, what a great crowd. Um, it, was a, it was a great day. The weather was amazing too. I don't think Mario Peter he did. He, he, he just he, he, he didn't quite get the right memo uh, about dressing. Uh, so he, he was out there in pregame without his uniform, but he got it on uh, before we came back out. And uh, but yeah, he was uh, he was late uh, to our pregame uh, uh, meal, actually dinner last night. So and uh, you know was kind of in my doghouse a little bit, and so just didn't play him. Didn't play him. At the same time of year to not have the right uh, urgency in everything we do. Everything matters. Uh, everything matters. So he's a great kid. He's a great player. But uh, he's just got to get a little more serious about the little things. And John Simpson, um, I guess. We held him. We held him. And uh, he was dressed and ready. Uh, but uh, we held him. He, he was battling a little sore ankle. Actually played last week. He, he hurt it two games ago. And uh, uh, ended up ended up was able to play last week and, and could have played today, but but we just held him. And same thing with Xavier. Uh, Xavier was ready to go to and wanted to get him out there and kind of get. But really didn't feel like we needed to play him. And uh, so he's excited. He's chomping the bit. He wanted to play, uh, but uh, you know I'm glad that we got him back and he's he's ready to go and can have a good full week of. Of practice and uh, and get get back on track.
How important was it to get the starting offense to stay on the field through the first half and then a little bit into the second half? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we knew that's what we were going to do, regardless of what the score was. Uh, you know, we liked the rhythm that we have. We got good momentum going. And, and uh, there were certain things that we just wanted to try to get done. Uh, and it was, you know, sometimes you get in games like that and you want to you wanna get a couple things on tape. There's a couple things you want to uh, try or maybe set up for later. And um, so it was important that we, that we were able to, um, you know, play that half and then the same thing again, start out uh, there in the, in the third quarter uh, as well. It was a good, good drive. Do you remember the first long run you ever saw Travis break on? First long run, uh, yeah. It was uh, in camp. And, um, you know, because, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, he was a B-back. You know, he played in a, a, a option, and uh, he was he was a B back a lot of the time, and kind of puny uh, when he got here, uh, and just you know not a very imposing guy, and uh, had big old braces on his teeth, and he just kind of you know I don't know he thought maybe he'll redshirt or something, and then we get into camp first time we got into full pads the very first day. And uh, we went full pads uh, day five is when you can go full pads in camp. And he broke a run. I mean, and it was like, whoa. And then for the rest of the camp, it didn't matter what group he was with. He could have been with the threes, the twos, the ones. Every day he would break a run. I mean, to the point you're like, I mean, this guy is unbelievable. And uh, he just runs with, uh, you know, any, any, and, you know, so he really wasn't very developed physically yet. Uh, but uh, he's, his lower body now is so powerful. His upper body's gotten – he's not even close. That guy three years from now, when his upper body really fully matures, he, he's going to be – he's going to be unbelievable. I mean, he, he is special. I, I've, I've never had a guy like him that has such collision balance, you know, the ability to, to just run through tackles, yards after contact. He's just so hard to, to tackle, and he gets in such – unorthodox positions, but yet stays on his feet. And then he's just got that, you know, he's got that spiller gear to take it the distance, but he's got, he, he's kind of thunder and lightning, you know? I mean, he's the, he's the combination uh, of both, uh, special. And, and then he's just matured so much in the passing game, he's never caught a pass. Uh, now he's so confident because he's throwing a pass, he's catching passes, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, He's he's starting to really, uh, you know, enjoy his diversity uh, the, of his game. So he actually wanted to go in and punt today. Uh, but told him we'd hold that for another time. Are there any players you know that we may not see this year, but you know, next year, two years, we'll be we talking about them like we talk about Travis and Isaiah in terms of athletic just freakiness. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Y'all know, remember we redshirted Isaiah. You know, he was a redshirt. Uh, we've had a lot of great, great players around here who redshirted and uh, went through our power hour. And sometimes they redshirt because they're physically just not ready. Sometimes they're just mentally not ready. And that was Isaiah. He, he was just, you know, happy to be here and, and didn't know much about football. Had a lot to learn and, uh, uh, and knew it, you know, especially when he got over there and, you know, Coach V's in his ear every play and he doesn't know how to line up. and. The game's really fast, so uh, you know we, we we got a bunch of guys like that. I mean, we got a lot of young talent on this team that, uh, for sure, you know, might be two years down the road or, or whatever. That that uh, you know they're just going to get better and better and better and better. I mean, I love our young safeties. Uh, you don't see them a whole lot, but I mean, I think we got a really good young group of guys. And, and same thing at corner at Sheridan and, and Andrew Booth. Those guys are going to be really good players. Uh, but we, you know, right now with DK and AJ, you know, they, they're just, you know, are a little bit ahead. Uh, but their time will come. And um, I mean, we got guys like that at every position. Uh, so it's exciting. And hopefully we can add a few more this year. Travis said it went just that Monday after the North Carolina game that you got after him pretty good. It was really for two weeks. Just what was yeah, that? it was a long two weeks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was unfortunate for him we had an open date. Uh, so it was. Uh, it was. It lingered. Uh, it lingered for a couple of weeks. Uh, but you know, again, he just. I just wanted to make sure that that you know he understood that you know 
the, what the expectations were. And uh, everybody's everybody's got to play to the standard. You got to prove it every week. Uh, but again, he he's he's been amazing. He's been awesome. Coach, ever since your close win in North Carolina, um, you guys have scored over 45 points four games in a row. Can you talk about how this young group of players have responded to adversity just like that? Yeah. And how proud you are? Yeah. There's a lot of people think we lost that game. Uh, you know, but we actually won it. Uh, so I think. I think that's the – we really haven't had a lot of adversity. And uh, that game uh, was – was there was definitely some. I mean, you're on the ropes and you got to make some plays. And I, like I said, after that game, that's the first game I've ever seen Trevor Lawrence in the fourth quarter. And I don't even know how many games he's been here now. Uh, 24 games. I've never seen him in the fourth quarter <laughs> with a game on the line. And so to see him have to go out there on third and six or seven or whatever it was and, and make a big play for his team, and, and then especially because we couldn't get the ball. We had the ball three minutes in the fourth quarter. So you're, you're not only you got to make a play, but, but, but your, your, your opportunities are so few. Um, and, uh, you know, he was awesome. And then to see his leadership in that game, but to, and then to see our team, and, you know, we, we obviously – uh, didn't play great in that game, but now all of a sudden it comes down to a play. And good teams find a way to win those games. Simple as that. And we've won a bunch of them over the last eight, nine years, those one-score games. Uh, it's just been a while since we've been in one. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, just finding a way to win. So, so that, was, uh, that was good to see. And then we've had some adversity within games, you know, moments here or there, not ever to a point where you felt like the game was in jeopardy. But uh, I think our team has responded all year long. Good leadership, and uh, this is a fun group, and getting better every week. Anybody else? All right. All right. Appreciate it.